every dinosaur fossil has some information to provide, however minor that may be. Some are more important than others. The more complete a specimen is, the better. The rarer the dinosaur, the better. That is why every single Pachycephalosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and Taurosaurus are cause for celebration. What might be even more important and valuable are useful specimens of immature individuals from these well-known dinosaurs. That is because juvenile animals are rarely ever found. They are smaller, lighter, and became snacks for other animals more frequently. Discovery of juvenile dinosaurs can provide a broader understanding of ancient biodiversity and ecology. It's just a shame that Tyrannosaurus is so popular because many of the juveniles found so far have been sold off to unknown individuals. The same cannot be said for the latest Tyrannosaurus discovery, made by 8-year-old Liam, 11-year-old Jessen, and their 10-year-old cousin, Caden. In the summer of 2022, they were wandering around the badlands of Marmoth, North Dakota, looking for fossils, when they stumbled upon some large, shiny brown bones eroding out of a rocky outcrop on some BLM land. The kids sent photos of their find to DMNS paleontologist and famed dino mummy finder Tyler Leeson, who confirmed what the kids had found was a dinosaur. Once Leeson got out there to Marmoth, serendipitously his hometown, he was able to confirm that what was found was a medium-sized dinosaur with some good portions of its body preserved. Excavation Time Over the course of 11 days, Leeson, the kids, and a crew from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science excavated, field-prepared, jacketed, and removed the specimen. According to the press kit materials for this discovery, the excavation was a meticulous process. The overlying rock or overburden was first removed using a 70-pound jackhammer and picks and shovels. The crew then carefully excavated around the bones using specialized tools and techniques to ensure the fossil was not damaged. It was only when the crew were actually chipping rock away from the fossils that they were able to give a tentative identification to it a juvenile Tyrannosaurus. That made the find extra special. There are only about a handful of juvenile Tyrannosaurus in publicly available institutions where they can be studied and restudied. So, adding another to that list will only help in uncovering the many mysteries of even this most famous of dinosaurs. It had to be hauled out of the middle of nowhere via helicopter, onto a big old truck bed, and back to the Denver Museum for further preparation and study. Once the specimen was brought back to the museum, preparators and paleontologists had to take a saw to the plaster jacket that encased the fossil. Scientists don't usually fully prepare every single bone out of the rock matrix they are lodged in, instead opting to remove as much as seems reasonable for study. So, the preparators will start with cutting the top off and then prepare as much as they need to from the bones before removing any other plaster bits. The Denver Museum team, ever the social media wizards, took the opportunity to be involved with a documentary by Giant Screen Studios simply called T-Rex. The documentary production company sent people out to film the discovery and it's been a part of the moderate viral marketing for the IMAX film, which will premiere in IMAXs across the country at the end of June 2024. This will be the next big IMAX dinosaur film that museums show, like Giant Scream Films' last Antarctic Dinosaurs film. On top of that, the DMNS took a cue from the North Carolina Museum with their lab and display of the Montana Dueling Dinosaurs specimen, which includes a Triceratops and Juvenile Tyrannosaurus supposedly locked in mortal combat. The North Carolina Museum invested millions with the help of generous donors to construct an entirely new fossil preparation lab for the specimen. This preparation lab also happens to be unlike any that has ever been made before. It's expressly designed to be open so that the museum visitors can literally walk right up to the staff and ask questions about the specimen as they're chipping rock from it. The DMNS exhibit for their juvenile tyrannosaur, which they have nicknamed Teen Rex, won't be as open as the North Carolina one, but it is similar in concept, trying to open up the processes of science to the general public. The new exhibit, Discovering Teen Rex, will open June 21st and presumably run until they fully prepare the bones from their huge cradle. 
Around the temporary fossil prep lab, they have a bunch of end Cretaceous fossil specimens out on display to teach viewers about the world in which Teen Rex lived and died. Shifting our focus onto the nature of Teen Rex, you may find that the story is rather scant. At this time, not much is known about Teen Rex because it has not been fully prepared, measured, photographed, scanned, or studied. However, some info has still been collected on the critter. The specimen consists of chunks from the skull, the hips and hind legs, and some exceedingly small fragments from the tail. Though this may seem fragmentary, and it is compared to some other specimens, this is still enough bones to be considered a useful specimen. A very tentative size for Teen Rex has been estimated at around 25 feet, 7.65 meters, and 3,500 pounds, 1.75 tons. I won't bother bringing in Mr. Man here, because a better size estimate may be reached when Teen Rex inevitably gets published on in a few years from now. Teen Rex has been tentatively labeled a juvenile or subadult Tyrannosaurus Rex. However, the history of this sort of identification is extremely long and goes far from the topic of this video. In short, a handful of juvenile Tyrannosaur remains have been uncovered from the same rock layers as the giant definitive specimens of Tyrannosaurus Rex. Some of these specimens have been considered too distinct from known Tyrannosaurs to be the same dinosaur. So, some scientists came up with a new bin for these specimens, Nanotyrannus lancensis. Over the course of the last 30 years, various groups of scientists have gone back and forth as to whether this smaller gracile tyrannosaur is a unique genus of tyrannosaur that lived alongside Tyrannosaurus rex itself, whether it is a new species of the Tyrannosaurus genus, or whether it is simply the juvenile form of Tyrannosaurus rex. After all, every known specimen of Nanotyrannus is immature, or at least that is what it seems. Data for various anatomical traits for both dinosaurs has been used to conclude one way or the other, but new and better specimens of these young tyrannosaurs will help to narrow down an answer. The weird thing about Teen Rex is that it's at a size that is in between the largest known specimen of juvenile tyrannosaur, Jane, and a fully adult Tyrannosaurus rex. Teen Rex is actually one of the biggest juvenile tyrannosaurs ever found. Unfortunately, it is missing the arms. One of the bits of evidence used to separate Nanotyrannus from Tyrannosaurus is that it had proportionally larger arms. How could an animal keep the arms the same size or shrink them as the animal matured? Many experts think this is entirely possible as many animals with us today change their proportions in all sorts of ways as they mature. Another piece of weird data is that Nanotyrannus specimens seem to have more teeth than adult Tyrannosaurus rexes. How or why would they seem to lose entire tooth sockets as they age? Some say this is impossible, while others contend this is entirely plausible. Some of this data is even not super strong either. I sometimes wonder if this issue is hiding a more interesting reality. Maybe some are juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex, and others are juveniles or young adults of another Tyrannosaur that coexisted with Tyrannosaurus rex. After all, the majority of late Cretaceous formations and the ecosystems they contain, where Tyrannosaurs are found, contain more than one Tyrannosaur. New Mexico had Dynamoterror, Bestaiversaur, and a handful of yet-to-be-published Tyrannosaurs. Canada and the northern United States had three species of Despletosaurus, plus Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus. Then there was Dryptosaurus and Appalachiosaurus from the continent of Appalachia, don't forget Nanooksaurus of Alaska, plus Tarbosaurus, Aliuramus, Electrosaurus, and Chanchosaurus from West and Central Asia. Sure, some of these critters aren't directly overlappable, but many are, and many probably were. You can see why I have restrained myself from going too deep into this topic in videos not literally about the issue. That's about it for Teen Rex for now, though. Teen Rex and its discovery will be covered as a case study in the new T-Rex documentary, and you can view its preparation live at the DMNS for however long they want to keep it on exhibition. Finally, a happy ending for one of these things. What do you think? Do you think this critter will slay Nanotyrannus once and for all? For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.
Mm-hmm.